I wear all. Right. So everybody take a nice big deep breath and let it all go. I am here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because he who sent me will direct me. I am content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed as I let him teach me to heal. Amen. <laughs>
So shortly after that, he got scarlet fever, and he was actually sick for three years, missed school for three years, had to be homeschooled long before the concept of homeschooling ever was initiated. What and, age was he then? Pardon me? What age? He was around, shortly after his sister died, this happened. Oh. Yeah. And um, they, they even said that there was a 50-50 chance that he would live, and this particular um, situation for him was pretty dramatic, and I guess he couldn't even walk at all. And he had to learn how to walk after this ended. And then when he returned to school, you know, he felt left out. He felt, you know, he couldn't participate in sports. So he tried to, to kind of play a low-key uh, way of being because he didn't want to call a, call a lot of attention to himself. And, you know, again, how many of us in some way or others did we have the experience of, you know, either I'm not good enough, there's something wrong with me, you know, I'm not going to let anybody in because, you know, why would I let you in because you already know that I'm, I'm, I'm marred or I'm not as good or whatever, and I'm not going to let you in any further to let you have a, a viewpoint of that. And I think we all collectively have had or do have those experiences even to this day. And how quickly just somebody saying something or looking at you the wrong way can just bring us down into a hole that we can let, you know, stay in for months and weeks and years even. All right, so then after he got out of high school and graduated, and he was only, I think, 16, because even though he missed school, apparently his parents must have done a good job at the homeschooling because they put him ahead in school. And he decided he didn't want to be at home any longer, so he wanted to go away to school. And his parents were rather poor. They didn't really value an education at all, but he won a scholarship, so he did go to college. And he immediately got into a fraternity and, you know, realized that was a bad choice because he was so used to living in a very quiet, peaceful type of an experience that, you know, all-nighters and people yelling and screaming all day and night just wasn't his thing. But he did make it through school. And he was a very shy, quiet, and very private person. He lived a gay lifestyle, but he did not share much about that. And um, as I read, it said that, of course, even if he had not been gay, he would not have shared a whole lot about that part of his life. That was just something he kept to himself. Um, you know, I, I can find out for you, but I don't know off the top of my head. And one more question. Sure. Uh, what about the Fourth of July? For we're, we're we're going to get to that. <laughs> yeah. It's a mystery. Yeah, this is a mystery. That's We're the leading theme up theme. to the theme of the thing, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, and like many of us, he struggled with self-hate. And even though oftentimes he came across with others with a great deal of patience and love and compassion, he did not offer that to himself. And I know many of us struggle again with that. And he, you know, struggled with the lack of confidence, insecurity, self-doubt, and self-loathing, which again, not unusual, pretty much the same as what we did. And even as he, you know, graduated from college and got a PhD, his father basically made fun of him and said, you know, what do you want to get a PhD? Is that just so you could have a piece of paper to stick up on the wall? And at one point in time, his father even went into his therapy office and totally destroyed it. Wow. So I'm setting this scene because he, like all the rest of us, had a lot of stuff going on in his life, even into his adult life. And, you know, many, 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 many opportunities for healing were put into place in regard to his life and his decision to work on the course and work on the relationships that were in his course. Um, now, he and Helen had a very difficult time communicating. Work relations were horrible. And then, I guess, again, the, you know, the beginning of the course. So, 
Larry just mentioned the idea of the 4th of July, and again, the reason why I chose to work with, with Bill a little bit is that Def Bill Thefford actually physically died on 1988 on the 4th of July. And apparently the day before the 4th of July, he had spoken with his sister and he told his sister that he really felt wonderful, he was feeling good, he felt complete, he felt that he had forgiven everybody that he knew. Um, he said, I have no more baggage, I'm cleaned out, in and out, and I'm complete with everyone. And he did get together with Judith Scutch, and Judith Scutch is, we talked about her a couple weeks ago, Judith was like the fourth person on the scene who helped bring forth the course into its fruition. And he went to her house on the 4th of July for a party. And once again, he was all, all bubbly and running around and jumping up and down, which was not characteristic for him either. And Judith said, what's going on with you? You, you know, you look like you're you know, on drugs or something. And he said, yes, it's my Independence Day. And of course, she didn't know what he was talking about. And he said again to her, just like he had mentioned to, to his sister, you know, I have, I'm, I'm done, I'm empty, I'm complete. And so he said, I've forgiven everyone. And Judith knew him pretty well, so she knew some of the things that he had gone through and the people he had issues with. So she started going through the line, this person, this person, how about Helen? He said, yep, even Helen, I'm done. And then he literally um, went for a walk and fell over with a heart attack because he was finished. He was done. It was his uh, celebration of his Independence Day. Yes. Which, and this is Bill Thetford. He's the fellow that helped um, Helen in transcribing the course. Yep. Okay. He was her boss, too. Yes. Correct. I think he Yes, and, and and as soon as she met him, even I should say, as soon as she saw him, even before she actually spoke with him, she heard a voice that says, "This is the person you need to know." Cool. Yeah, and she did not want that job. She did not, you know, she Wait, she had. A, um, yes, as soon as she saw Bill, she heard a voice that said, "This is the person you need to meet." All right, so I'm going to just read a couple of real quick little, little concepts around this where he said he was willing to strip himself of his persona, his psychological armoring, his prestige, his unhelpful habits and presumptions. Throughout the process, he danced, laughed, and struggled, joked, despaired, and supported, loved, feared, and prayed, and steadily forgave his way to the end. So again, much like us, he had to not only learn, understand this material, he had to put it into practice. He had to live this material on a day-to-day -day basis. And as it said, he joked, and then there's despair, he supported, he loved, he feared, prayed. You know, the roller coaster ride of the undoing process is collectively for all of us pretty much the same thing. And yes, it's quite a challenge. You know, I can sit here and say all I want to do is love. And then that person who I have issues with walks in the room and says one thing and I'm, you know, back in the toilet where I, where I usually am. <laughs> and to keep pulling ourselves out of that and keep stepping forward in the midst of anything that presents itself. All right, so the traits he uh, cultivated, the ones that led him home, are well within everyone's reach. A daily, steadfast, determination to let all the conflict, the ego sustenance, and the willingness to make peace of mind the primary goal for each encounter. We need to relinquish our defenses, attachments, and valueless investments, though not necessarily our worldly possessions. We cherish our grievances rather than each other, as if they were precious heirlooms but we can change our minds. I'm gonna read that last line again because, and I might even talk about it a little bit. We cherish our grievances rather than each other. What the heck does that mean? 
What that means is I value being right, I value being in charge and in control more than I, than I value just completely choosing for love above and beyond absolutely everything in my life. And as if they were precious heirlooms, but we can change our minds. But that not only takes a willingness, it takes a commitment and a, and a continued commitment day after day after day. So I have this book, if anybody ever is interested in knowing more about Bill, it's called Never Forget to Laugh, and it was written by Carol M. Howe, and she was a good friend of, of uh, Bill's, and so she talks a lot about his life and the experiences he went through. So there are a couple little sections I'd like to share. Is that what you've got most of your information for? Um, some of it, but I, you know, I think Absence from Felicity probably had some. There's some on the internet. There's a variety of different sources. I've collected it over the years. So, All right, so these are some words of Bill. From birth, our minds are trained to believe in separation, self-absorption, and lack not only through our families, but through our societal encounters, education, political, religious, and through the media. That training, unhelpful and inaccurate, but not necessarily deliberate to regard ourselves as smaller and less deserving or important than we really are, must change if we hope to experience any peace of mind. The consistent practice of a course pra principles drives long-standing, limiting beliefs from our original mind, training into conscious awareness so we can decide whether to be bound by them or not. It is as if we were all born and raised in a cult with the ego as the tyrannical leader requiring absolute allegiance. Since we know of no other way of being, we presume that this is the only way to live. A Course in Miracle asks, acts as a deprogrammer for our ego-directed brainwashing. Now, as we start to flip that and live that, it feels like we are being messed up because it's like we're being turned upside down and inside out and backwards. Because if I've been going in one direction all my life and somebody comes along and goes, nope, that's the way you need to go, and all my energy, all my thoughts, all my everything is going this direction, that doesn't feel very inviting. Even though I can sit here and say, yes, but I only want love, I only want love, do I really only want love? And am I willing to do what is required to move me in the direction of that love that I say with my mouth that I want? Well, if there's a part of your mind that really, really wants love. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's, our, it's my nature, yes. Yeah, but there's, there's the other nature underneath. Well, well, I'd say Freud, it's on top. <laughs> Freud proved that the human nature is nothing but aggression. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's, and aggression is that's the. That's what we came in with. And aggression is the opposite of love. Of love. And right. that's Absolutely. the result of having chose, chosen for the ego. Yeah. And we don't know what love is. Oh no. Here. No. We know what pretend so we love. Know what we're, yeah, of we course. Know special love. And for the most part, most of us really, especially when we first start, are looking to fix a little couple corners in my house so that it looks nice and everybody says I, nice things to me and everything is good. But as most of us eventually understand, that that's never going to work the way I want it to, no matter how hard I try to manipulate the world. The world is not going to bring me the love that I seek because it doesn't live here. Yeah. It's the opposite of this. Nothing here fits over here. All right, and practice. Bill did, but what was he practicing? The last section of the text, Choose Once Again, was one of his favorites, and he took it to heart. Trials are but lessons that you have failed to learn presented once again. So where you made a faulty choice before, you now can make a better one and thus escape all pain that what you chose before has brought to you. And 
it really is no different than learning a skill in, in our world, whether it's playing tennis or playing the piano or learning how to walk or whatever it may be, we keep doing it until we accomplish it. And, and I talk about, you know, a baby walking across the room. We all know a baby doesn't just, you know, pop out of the womb and walk around. A baby has to learn how to, you know, crawl and then pull themselves up and then they fall down and they cry and they get scraped knees and they just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it until it gets accomplished. Well, we don't have a real physical picture of the process of doing the course and its accomplishments because, you know, if a baby falls, a parent can look at that baby and know, you know, if you keep getting back up, you're going to learn how to walk. Well, with this, it's so obtuse, there aren't any perimeters, I guess you could say, that guide us along the way. And a lot of times when we're doing the best, the next thing hits us in the head faster than it did before because I don't need to figure out how to solve it. I solved it, but now it's, now it's time for the next one. And just like playing tennis, you know, if you get good at this ball, they're going to throw one over here so that you can learn how to hit the ball over here and then over here and then over here and then over here and over here. So eventually you can hit that ball gracefully back no matter where it comes from. Well, in our lives, it feels like I didn't do it right. I'm, you know, I might as well quit doing this whole thing. And of course, the ego would love nothing more than for you to quit because you made a contract with the ego that you would always, always stay over here. And so now it starts to turn around and we realize the answer that I'm looking for simply cannot be found in the world. And then you become more willing to practice the course. He was determined to notice the times when he lost his peace times that threatened his self-image or when things weren't unfolding as he thought they should. And you know, I think we can all use this as a very um, trusty point of any time you lo lose your peace or if you're threatened, if your image is threatened, or if you're, you know, even your body's threatened, these are moments to really look at and examine why is it that I am shattered by something like that? Because normally what do we do? We point the finger at the person that said or did it and, and then we're, we're done. But if we take it back to, if I'm not at peace and I'm shattered by what somebody said, it's not by what they said or did, it's that I can be shattered. Well, we're so addicted to just turning it around and blaming it on everybody else. And I would say for the most part, that's probably where we will begin in every encounter. But as you kind of pull it back in and start to observe and look at it and question, what about me still can be you know, crushed by a look or a word or a piece of paper or whatever it may be that comes in my life that rips me down and pulls me into the hole again? Well, you know, I, today or another day, I noticed that I'm really only fighting with my projection. Absolutely. That's all I'm dealing with. Is yep. Not Harvey. My projection. Yep. And these puppets are just going to a part of the projection. Yep. And we, that's why we try to blame it on the other party. And yep. I love to be abandoned or hurt. Oh, I, yeah. I love it. That's that gives me the greatest gift. Mm -hmm. That oh, look at God! I did your work. I got the son of a bitch. You don't have to do nothing. <laughs> and that's how we live our life. Yep. Looking for the son of a bitch. Yep. Mm -hmm. And yep. this is included as part of the son of a bitch. Yep. 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 It, it's hilarious with fighting with ourselves. Really? Always, 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 really? always, always. Yeah, I remember. Um, Herb, who teaches the course too, um, said he had this dream one night where he woke up and he was like this, yeah, and he, he was fighting, fighting and he with, thought he was fighting with somebody else, but he was really fighting with himself. And literally, that's what's always going on, but we don't connect the dots and become aware of that's what's really happening, that's what's going on all the time. Because, you know, as we, something we read here, that in the cult, 
It's all about what they're doing. Let's fix them. Let's change them. Let's do, have them do anything something different. Anything. Anything. Absolutely. Is what we want to take care of. Yep. That's our gift yep. to the world. Yep. Yes, and we have to be very gentle with ourselves in the process of and healing that's, and, that's the key. and turning this around because literally we have been programmed by choice on some subconscious level to act as kill or be killed. I want to be in charge. I want to be in control. And you're the problem. So, you know, that's, that's what's running the show. And to stop, pull yourself back, and go, wait a minute, is that really what I want to do? Do I want to make my brother guilty so I can appear to be innocent? Yeah, there's a part of you that really, really wants to. Not a, a huge part of me. Yeah, but yeah, any, but any addition. For all right, of us. It, for all of us, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's yep. the way it is. Absolutely. Until we change it. Yep. And, and, and you know yep. that section uh, in, the, in the course of, uh, that talks about forgiveness, you know, and Ken, in all his CDs, it's his favorite is be still in his, yep. you know, quietly do nothing, yep. look and wait, yep. and don't judge. Yep. And that is the key factor of in all of everything it. that we do out here, is look at our ego. Just look at whatever's going on. Don't make it lily white or anything. Just look at what you're doing yep. without judging it. Yep. And that's the key. And to look at your brother the same way. The same way. <laughs> you look at this, look at this, all of it yep. without yep. judgment. Kathleen. Yep. Try to speak loud if you can. <laughs> I'm, I'm very curious about him, though, and what he was doing and how do you think he got it. And then... We will continue. <laughs> okay, and I have to leave, but... Yeah, I know. Um, and then I know that we're always fighting with ourselves and all yes. this stuff, but it's like, what is it we're trying to figure out? Like, let's say you get the concept of forgiveness and you get that you're fighting with yourself. It's like, what's... Is, is it the same struggle storyline for every single yep. person? Yep. Yes. Yep. And yep. the scroll and the story line <coughs> just got me separated. It's the same yes. thing. Just keep that's just the same. It, it, it's not anything new for anybody. We're not looking at what this no story matter is what it looks story. like. It's the same answer for, for yes. yes. Now the thing is, Kathleen, you just, you know, talked about what the course is about. Now those are nice words, but this is the understanding of the course intellectually. The rest of it is the practice of doing that on a consistent basis so that you live that from unequivocally. And, and well, dem live it and, and you automatically demonstrate it, yes. So, you know, just knowing it is great because not knowing it, you don't even know what direction you're going. I but I'm going to be looking for something I don't need to be looking for. Indeed. Because, you know, like I, like I ran into my family on this bike trail and just ignored each other. And yeah. it's like, so there I am projecting them in front of me when I'm saying I love them and miss them, and I can't talk. Like, what's mm -hmm. up with that? Well, like, that's, that's just showing you that right now I'm too afraid of, of that encounter. And, and just look at it, recognize that's where I am, and don't judge it, but do ask for help. But it's not even the encounter. I'm looking at a projection. <coughs> it's, a, it's a hologram, a projection of mm -hmm. something I don't want to deal with. Good po go good word usage. Way. I don't want to deal with it. Okay, so that's something you have to really look at. I'm not ready to mm -hmm. want only love absolutely and unequivocally in whatever I encounter in my life. Yeah, well, you know, and you can get up. You, it's not about getting upset about the realization about that, but it is about becoming aware. That's why I'm not over there. And it's not because God kicked me out of heaven and he won't let me in. It's because I haven't accepted myself as the Holy Son of God who has always been the Holy Son of God that will always be the Holy Son of God. And so are all my relatives. And so that's what Bill did? And that's what and Bill was able to do, yes. Uh, but Helen really never did this. Nope. No. And, you know, it's kind of like one of those deals that, you know, it, 
the material's there. Whoever is ready mm -hmm. to go that way have that opportunity. Now, did Helen, and you know, there is a place in the course where I'll say at the last moment, you could make that shift, and maybe she did. You know, it didn't appear a lot of times throughout her life that she was going in that direction, but nobody knows. So, you know, and the bottom line is it doesn't matter if they got it or not. The bottom line is, uh, am I going to get it or am I getting it as that's I walk all, my journey? Like you said. Atonement for yourself. That's all that's needed. That's all that's needed. Yep. How about Ken? Did he keep dropping? Well, you know, so you've met Ken, yeah. Larry, so, I mean, to me, I don't know if he got it, got it, but he sure got it a whole lot more gotten it than, than I have. Well, he, yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. He and I, and I, I think, yeah. In his early life, he, just like us, right. searched it. Yep. He experienced just what we experienced. Yep. And he's a very literate man. Exactly. Yep. So, yeah. He had a sense of humor just like mine. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I loved him and never met him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sarcastic yep. sense of humor. Well, I, I, you know, it hasn't been that long since I've been watching his YouTubes. Mm -hmm. And anybody who can talk like that. Oh, my God. Oh, he, of course, the way he does. I think he's got something. Yeah. I, I have no doubt in my mind yep. because just, and I've heard, it sounds like I'm so much better than everyone, but I've, I've listened to several of his workshops and I listen to him almost daily and he had a, an understanding beyond my comprehension. Yep. Yeah, because he just, you know, when he was doing the, um, putting the, the, the course into chapters and whatever. I mean, it was almost like he immediately just chop, 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 and there it was. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Just oh, you know, but a lot of yeah. these masters yeah. demonstrate the same thing, you know, that Jesus demonstrated. Yep. You know, even um, <coughs> Byron Katie and yep. Coley, just out of the blue. Their thought system flipped. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yep. And, and you know, we all can do that. Yep. 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 We all have that capability and within all, us. Well, Katie and the rest of them, they went, <laughs> they went to jail. Yeah, it got very, very intense. And it yep. went all the way to the, you know, looking at the self tapes, which we don't want to see. Yeah. You know, yep. let's see it over there. Well, that's let's true. see it because we're in love me yep. and I came in, blah, blah, blah. And not see that I'm carrying around all this self-hate and resentment. Yep. I, I like what um, Elizabeth Gilbert said, and I'm not denying anything that anybody has said here, but Elizabeth Gilbert has a highly popular TED talk where she talks about creativity mm -hmm. and where ideas come from. And she firmly believes it's not coming from me, ego, struggling to get something. It's a receiving of a download uh, from higher power. She talked about that in a very interesting way, but she's the one who wrote Eat, Pray, Love. Mm -hmm. And um, I I know some people, I've met a lot of these big time folks I have, and I don't really see them being different. And I'm happy that they're not that different, because that means everybody has the ability to receive that download. Yep. It has you know, it has nothing to do necessarily with just struggle, 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 because some people struggle, 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 and, you know, harm themselves or die or whatever. Yep. And um, so I, I think about that. And then also with my, I have a, a stepson. I only saw him three, three times, maybe. My other two stepsons, they lived with me, so with my ex-husband. And um, <coughs> the little one, he would, um, Tobias would always, he was not very flattering, uh, warm, and I used to say, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? And then I realized, you know, I love him no matter how he is towards me. <laughs> and that, that's it, I yep. do. I don't need to, love does not necessarily have to look a certain way. Exactly. I see them on the back path, wave or not wave, that doesn't mean I don't love them any less. You know, it's just yep. what is for the moment. 
and a lot of the course, so it, it always feels like we're going the wrong direction and we're really going the right direction, is to look at when I don't want to love that person because they don't look the same or they don't act the same or they don't give me the hug or they don't wave at me. And to realize my mind would not have those thoughts popping up if I was aligned with the Holy Spirit side of the chart. That only comes from the popcorn that's been placed in the, in, the, in the mind that's coming spewing out on wherever I'm looking. Mm -hmm. So we need to then go back and go, oh, if I'm seeing it that way, it means I'm aligned with the ego and I can do something different now. <clears throat> so it's, it's so important to, to use your, your life. It, it's your classroom. It's helping you recognize where I'm coming from. And, you know, I give the example of if you're an orange and you squeeze it, what do you get? Orange tomato juice, juice, right? Yeah, well, no tomato juice, orange juice. But if I'm love and you squeeze me, the only thing that could come out is love. I'll tell you what comes out. <laughs> and if, well, I was going to say, and if something other than love comes out, no that I'm not coming from love. And it's not about what the other person on the outside is doing or not doing or how they should do it or whatever. It is about me. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep bringing it back to me. What is it that I need to heal my mind so that only love comes out no matter what happens? We're constantly judging ourselves. Well, we're constantly judging, period. Well, <laughs> you know? yeah. right yeah. there. Yeah. But, sure. You know, it's, and it's a continuum all the way around yep. that's what we're doing yep. that's what he's the only thing he asks us not to do yep don't judge well he not only says don't judge he says if you it's impossible for you to judge because you would have to exactly. know everything you about everything. everything yep yep yes i do well, <laughs> and, and, and really, and Helene, and that's, that's it right there. And that's where our yes, problem lies. Absolutely yeah. Because I do believe I know. I do believe I'm right. I do believe I can convince you otherwise. This course messes up your life. It messes up everything. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you messed up my drinking. Now it messed up my life. You got it, buddy. That's it right there. Yeah, I, I can't believe how angry I get at the fact that I have to bring it back and look at where this and is that's coming we don't want to see. That's well, exactly it. true. Yeah. That's exactly it. But I think, again, be gentle with yourself because literally from the moment we took our first breath, the entire world supported it's out there. And yes. now this comes around and says, oh, no, 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 no. It, exactly. I think I separated from God. Therefore, God and all his minions are the enemy. Yes. And so I'm going to surround myself with this lovely projection that yes. I've made. And it's what that's you don't want to see in your own mind. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that's my defense. That's it. Yep. And I it's, don't want to see this in my mind. Nope. So I got this. Yep. And, you know, I give the example of if you write with your right hand and then you break your right hand and you have to learn how to write with your left hand, first of all, you're angry because your arm is broken. And secondly, you don't really want to learn how to write with your left hand. Well, then that's just one little tiny incident that could happen in our lives. And this is about doing that with our entire life. I mean, is there something fun about that? I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm not finding a whole lot of fun, except for that's what's required to take you to that connection of love and only love. And eventually, I have these experiences sometimes, is mm -hmm. that, that turning around, constant turning around, eventually, it becomes, you get to see the value of it. Absolutely. And it becomes totally different. Right, and and no, I and I way. right, yes. yeah. And, and that is instead of the projection being the enemy, the projection is an invitation yes. to open up to see things. Yes, exactly. and as as Jesus says, you know, don't try to intellectually figure this out. Do this. Do and then you'll have these moments of, whoa, that certainly turned out much different than I thought it would, and very often much better than I thought it would. 
And literally every single time you drop this and choose this, this is increasing, becoming more solid. This is becoming less solid. So even if you, you, know, you choose and then you come back and the scenario even looks worse than it did before you left, something has happened to shift your mind, and this is really all we're working on healing is your mind, some shift has taken place. Well, yes, you can definitely. I mean, it's like, well, is that one section, I don't know if it's in the workbook lesson where it says, you just become more peaceful, your brow is not as tight, you know, it's like one you're, 55. run 55 things hard, um, that you just don't, you know, buy into the world that is such a serious place as we've all bought into the world of being. And that is a very gradual process, but that does begin to happen. It's like, yeah, you look at it and you go, well, yeah, I wish that didn't happen, but it's not like life threatening or you know just totally messing up with your whole life. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, because I can still get triggered, and there's some things that Absolutely. I'm really angry about. Mm -hmm. There are some things that I would have really got more, much more angry about in the past, right? In the past than I do right now, and there's right. some things I still get really angry about. Yep. Um, That's why she says, "Be gentle with yourself." Yeah. Yes. Right. That's the truth. Be gentle with her. Right. Yep. Yep. Uh, that me and my wife have, have been married for 66 years. And we're both up in age. And I tell her that we are older and we have to help each other out. Mm -hmm. And now I find that as we got older, we were also growing much closer Sweet. because of this. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times I, uh, I am looking to see what can I do to, to, to help her. Now, now I can do it with my wife. Now I got to do this with all people. There you go. But, but, but I find it, I'm looking at these all people in, in a little different light. I'm not there yet, right. but I'm, I, rather I feel as though I'm approaching it. And, and that's mm. how this works, Bob. You start practicing it maybe with one person and then you want to do it so that right. it goes around right. to ev absolutely everything. Because we're all in the same boat. We're all in the same, we're all walking wounded. Yeah. And if we really, 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 really got that, why would I want to you know, throw knives at people that are already wounded? We wouldn't, but we don't, have, we don't connect the dots in that way yet. Yeah, we're I really don't believe God's walking with me. No. That shows me that I don't believe that. No, exactly. Because if I did... You'd automatically oh, go that way. Yep, yep. Absolutely. So, Marianne? Yes, Jason. There's a, uh, there's a lesson that I am as God created me. Yes. But and we believe that. Go on. Pardon? <laughs> but we don't believe that, but go on. <laughs> right, but if you if you say that lesson, doesn't that help put you... And, and give control to the Holy Spirit, doesn't that help put you on the right side of the charge? Well, you got to be a little careful because you really want to look at the fact that I don't want that. And then when you're willing to drop it, it will automatically take you to the other side. See, I can be sitting over here mouthing words that talk about this, but I haven't let go of this so important that we have to let go of our investment in what the ego is and what it represents and that will create the space or the gap to be filled with the answer from the holy spirit does this represent separation mm -hmm. that's the ego. yep yep yep, yep. that help yeah i mean that's uh that's kind of what i'm talking about like if you oh, okay. let if you let go of you know, okay. you say, you basically say, I don't want to be in control, Holy Spirit. You okay. take control. All right, perfect. Then, then and we then, got it going. Yeah. And then you say the, the, the lesson. Um, does that? Yeah, I would say as long as you let go of control and then open the door to that answer, yes, that's, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Really Thank you. saying, show me that I am that. 
instead of I am that, which is very different. It sounds very similar, but if you're just sitting there going, I'm love, I'm love, I'm love, I'm love, that's not really what we're looking for. What we're really looking for is to, to recognize I'm not love, and let me show you the ways I can prove that <laughs> in my belief system. Again, we have to understand it. It's about our belief system. It's what runs the show. Okay. Yeah. Downloading was about affirmations, trying to um, what is it, push more stuff down on all this gunk that we already have. I am love, I am light, yep. you know, and all that. It doesn't, it, it didn't work for me. And that's not what the it course is It's not what the course is about, right. correct. And the course is about, you know, it's like before you download, you've got to get rid of some stuff. It's like you already, you know, you got all Well put. Well put. looking at what you really believe at the moment. Right, right, and getting, yeah, you gotta get some, uh, what's it called, space. Yeah, but this, you know, I mean, they talk about the Zen where where the person goes to the guru and the guru says, I can't pour any more water in your cup, it's full. We have to empty what I think I know about anything in order to fill it up. Yeah. 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 Great, Marianne. Yeah. Since we're in on that. Okay. Today's reading for me. Um, <clears throat> The, this is uh, the test of truth in chapter 14. Uh, yet the essential thing is, lear is learning that you do not know. Knowledge is power and all power is of God. You who have tried to keep power for yourself have quote unquote lost it. <coughs> and I mean basically what he's saying is, is getting to that point of I don't know is what leaves the space for the Holy Spirit to come Absolutely. In. And so, so vitally important for the understanding of this course. If, if I'm still in control, I'm over here. And we can manipulate, twist that around, mm -hmm. turn it around and make it look like, oh, I'm coming from this wonderful, loving place, but I'm still in control. You know you're getting, you're, you're, you're choosing the wrong side. Okay. I, I, oh, go ahead. I had an experience, this just tiny little things that I find very helpful. Um, I went into my cupboard and pulled out a bag of flour and it was filled with bugs. <laughs> and, you know, naturally my reaction is, gotta go, da, da, you know, the, the whole upset thing. And then, you know what, I don't know what this is about. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. So I left it there, you know, it's like, I'm not. I'm not going to use it. Right. I'll probably eventually throw it out. But they're they're in the house too. They're flying around in the house. So it's like have the flour. I, you know. Yeah, so, enjoy. So I have to buy another bag of flour. Right. Right. Just, right. You know. Right. Again, you still have those bugs in yet, your house but, reproducing. But this. But but this takes me to lesson five. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I, this Good. is not why I'm upset. This has nothing to do with what I'm upset about. And well, that's the, the bottom exactly. line, is recognizing. That's the bottom line yep. is we've yep. chosen to yep. follow the lead of the wrong teacher. Right. Yep. That, that tells the, the whole thing. If you yep. just watch what's going on, yes. that's the mind searching, is the world showing you What's affecting you? Well, and me trying yep. to figure out how to get rid of them, and you know, and all of this is so much stress. Well, it, it just mm -hmm. causes so much stress. It's just like leave the bag there. I don't care because this is not this is not what's causing my pain. No, right. but but Ken does say you don't. You think you have a problem? Fix it. Or, or if not. you can't fix it, call an exterminator. Yep. What problem? Right. Well, it's it's not to that. And, and it's and it's just like it's not that big of a deal, you know. But the bottom line well, the is, moment, it is a big deal. Thank you. 
But at the bottom line is that you came to a place of stillness instead of franticness. Exactly. And that's where the answer can come in. Because if I'm frustrated, upset, trying to figure it out, I've closed the door for that response to come forth. And you can't do that until you notice the frantic. Yes, of you course. You have to right. get, you know, you really have to say, oh, hold on a second. Wait, what's going on here? Because yeah. I'm, I'm overreacting as usual. <laughs> yeah. And that's okay. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's not, it's not okay. It's just, for me, that's the, the alarm clock. Wait yes. a minute, hold on, stop. What's, what's going, what's on, going on? Yes, yeah. And again, we are majorly addicted to the frantic, the you know, upset, the irritation that I got to do something. Fix it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we are extremely uncomfortable in that space of stillness. Now, I think most of us are coming to become a little bit more comfortable with that space of the stillness and quiet. But eventually, we will want only that and absolutely nothing else. But we have to start with where we are and not judge or attack yourself when you find yourself in the crazy place because <laughs> there's the crazy place. It shows up. Well, so, I just yeah. found a whole castle of bugs where I didn't expect to find them uh, a few days ago. <clears throat> and it's very really in the oven and a casserole. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't know. I mean, I just took it out, you know. Fruit you know, mm -hmm. I know I should not bring my bread bring food in. <laughs> yep. But uh, so I so I uh, was just innocently taking the casserole out, putting it in the oven for mm -hmm. law and order or something. I forgot completely about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then later I cut the oven on. Then I forgot about it again. <laughs> it was two days later. So I go my oven to put something else in there. Pull it out. Okay, I can't say I've ever had that experience. <laughs> Baked fruit flies, I guess, but it's a little extra protein. We chose that. Mine did. So I'm going to do this. I'm looking at this. I'm going, oh, I so, I so, I so. Indeed, indeed, indeed. That's right. In some countries, they'd be thrilled. Yeah. Honestly, my first thought was that was God doing know, for me what I couldn't do for myself. <laughs> I had no idea about those things. Right, there, there you go. And God killed them all off without <laughs> my help. <laughs> and put them in a bag, put them in the trash. It was my favorite casserole dish. I just didn't care. But, oh, okay. I'm the God doesn't kill. God doesn't kill. <laughs> no. God doesn't kill. They're not really dead. There is no <laughs> <laughs> they weren't yeah, there to All right. So, yeah, this is, what are you talking about? Yeah. Right? That's yeah. the whole separate. Right. Is to realize Listen, one thing God cannot, does not do is kill. And nor does he, <laughs> nor does he oppose. Right. The one thing you do that you don't do, or, you know, whatever. They're wherever they are. I just say yeah. blessings when they get killed. Right. <laughs> All right. So, can or not can Bill would. He was determined, this was, you know, after the course had been taken down and he really started to get very serious about the practice. He was determined to notice the times when he lost his peace, times that threatened his self-image, or when things weren't unfolding as he thought they should. Helene, <laughs> as you said earlier, that's what we're doing. As swiftly as possible, he would choose to let them go, realizing he was the author of his own distress. Again, we need to get that concept, a I think a difficult concept to really wrap our heads around. I, or excuse me, we as the collective son of God who wanted to choose against this because we wanted to be in charge, we wanted to be special, individual, and different. As a result of that choice, we brought this experience, and this is what we wanted. So when he says, realizing he was the author, excuse me, author of his own distress, we are the author of our own distress because we're too afraid of the peace and the love of God. And, and as then, long as that's there, with the answer, why am I afraid of God's peace? 
Well, most Instead people. Instead of fighting it. Right. Why am I afraid of guns? Yep. Because, well, yeah. Afraid to lose the body. Well, we're afraid to lose the identity we build up to be who we are. Yeah. Because we believe in death. That yep. there is room, you know. Yep. You think it's a little, you know, you know so that's big. Well, like yeah. Death. Because I identify with my body. Yep. And value my birth, but a fear a fearful of my death. One can almost see his original mindset being released and these new yet timeless values being adopted. So again, this is what we're all being asked to do is to take the, the cult rituals of our thought system of the ego and question, is this bringing me what I want? Or is this bringing me Look at what it's costing you. And look at what it's costing you. That is so vitally important. I mean, every time I get upset or lose it, it's foolish. Yep. And I mean, it's always it, based on end, fear. What does it really bring? Nothing. Nothing. And it's always based on some form of fear of, of you know, Maybe. staying in control. Yep. And, you know, again, the world is here to bring us all these wonderful opportunities because we set it up to make it this way so this individual or situation would allow me to be an innocent victim. And when we decide that's not worthy of my value any longer and I really want to be in connection with love rather than playing the part, the false part of an innocent victim and blaming my brother on my lack of peace, then I'll be willing to drop this and find out what the answer is. Until then, I'm just playing the game. But literally, every time you don't choose for that, you're putting God under the bus. Every time. Every time. <laughs> every time. <coughs> again, when you say you, again, it's not the body. And that's so hard to think if you think the body is making it. Absolutely it's correct, Miriam. Yes. It feels like it's you, though. Yes. That's why the evil loves it when you try to fix it out. How it right. So you can do that body. Yeah. And you're right, Marianne. And again, that's that's why it was set up in the way that it was set up, so that we would always be kind of lost in the place where the answer couldn't be found. Yeah, yeah. I and it's my keys in the kitchen. But I'm looking for them out of right, the exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you, you know, the course talks about the idea this is an ironclad answer, not it's, it, but not God proof. But boy, right to the end. And I just continue to marvel at how amazingly intact this thought system that was built by the ego is. It's, it's like, it's mind boggling, <laughs> literally mind boggling. And it's got so many strings that are weaved around in so many different ways that can get you coming and going. He's, uh, <clears throat> we were reading uh, Correction of Error mm -hmm. today. Not that I make any. But, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and I'm listening, you know, Harvey's reading, I'm listening. And I watch my mind trying to do an end run around what this book is really is saying. Telling me. Yeah, but I could do it this way. I could stick the knife in over here. I'm not going to do it head on, but I'll find a, I'll find yep, I'll a find way. another way. Yeah, yeah. Find and another it's way. always about manipulating the illusion yep. so that it works out best for me mm -hmm. and understand yes. that's all I really care yes. about. Yeah. And so maybe I might. Constantly doing that. Well, yeah, we're always constantly doing that. But we weren't consciously aware that we were constantly yeah, doing right. that. And that's why the value of looking or paying attention is so valuable. In I the mean, course. with raising children, it's not very easy when you're when you're operating from your main thing is fear sure. that's governing you, and here you're out pointing sure. you know, all Absolutely. the obstacles out here. And and that's I, that's the beauty of the setup of the ego is it, it, it's got so much to work with. Right. So much to work with. Every place you turn, the ego can be hiding around the corner. And the only thing that the Holy Spirit offers is nothing happened. That's not very fair, you know. Well, <laughs> in the dream, something did happen. Well, 
in well, our experience, but in truth, it did not happen. That's yes. Correct. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's where you get caught up. That's where you get caught up every time. All right, let's take a 10 minute break and we will come back and play some more. <laughs> All right, so in choosing to release his grievances, quiet his mind, and live defensively, Bill allowed the love that was the ground of his being and of everyone's to appear effortlessly. He was letting go of the learned untruth about himself. So, like all of us, we have to start where we are, become aware of what we're up to, what our egos are up to, and, you know, again, question, is this where I want to be? Is this how I want to be in the world? Or is love more important than that? And that's totally up to us in any given moment to make that choice. And it could be yes now and no tomorrow or, in the, you know, in the next moment. But the more moments that we begin to focus from that level, we're saying, I, I'll, I'd rather have this than that. Um, Betty, I'll, I'll tell Barbara here. Okay. I'm having a hard time here, too. So I want that more than that. But it's not Mary Ann I've got to ask for the Holy Spirit's help. Correct. To help me get there. Correct. Because you're just the puppet that's being operated by this choice. Okay? So no matter what the puppet does or doesn't do isn't going to make any difference. It's that we look who's running the show and then question if I want that to run the show or if I want to choose for the Holy so Spirit. So i got to ask the Holy Spirit Correct. This, you know, to help me. I want love, but I think it's the mind wants the love. Right. Delusion doesn't want anything, but right. the mind wants the love, but it seems like it's Mary Ann that wants the love. Correct. So and the mind it, has to ask the Holy Spirit to, uh, I guess it's my mind, if I say, Holy Spirit, please help me to see this differently. Right. Please help me to see this differently. Who's the me? <laughs> Right. The me, I mean, literally in the course, ultimately the me is always the dreamer. Because the dreamer that chose against love is dreaming a dream where Marianne is one of the characters. Marianne's yeah. a projection. Right. But I got that. So of the mind. Yeah, so I, so, when I say so I, is everything else. Thing. I'll get that part. So, so still when I say I want to see this differently. So the I is always the dreamer. It has to be. To see it, it has to be because nothing else, ex you know, you nothing dream? else exists. Right. Right. Okay, it just seems like it's very It's just Correct. that the Rose doesn't realize she's the dreamer yet. She thinks she's the dream figure. Right. And until I wake up to that, I ask for help. Right. And, and normally, where most of us begin, which is, again, normal, is I've had an, I have an issue in the world, as Mary Ann, and it's irritating me. So now I hear the Course, and the Course says the problem isn't what Mary Ann's doing. The, the, the problem is what the, you know, which choice is operating the puppet. And so you use the experience that Mary Ann's having in the world as the catalyst of the recognition that I have a problem where I'm not at peace. Yeah. Okay, but then we want to rise above that and understand it's really not about anything that's happening with Mary Ann, and thus the reason we talk about workbook lesson number five, because it's really not about what Mary Ann is experiencing. It's about the fact that a the dreamer that has chosen against love is bringing forth the dream of the character called Marianne. And, you know, don't be surprised. We're going to, and this is called level confusion or different levels. It's going to take a while before that all meshes and makes perfect sense to us. But think of it as the catalyst for my experience appears to be and then fill in the line. And you know, every day we have something new that gets well, filling in the line. Only well, from anything out <laughs> Doesn't there, matter. And that's what you're filling the blanks with. Correct. Anything. Yes. Anything. Yes. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The carpet on the floor. 
the bugs, the whatever. Yeah. And it's all me having chosen, unless it's love or peace and joy, is making noise. It's yeah. all the dreamer that wants that beyond right, beyond what you know. And again, that's what's running the show. So to be too bent out of shape about anything that happens in the world is actually ridiculous because we really want to look at. If I like, you know, stories about Kumbaya and I go to the movie theater and I pay my money to go to a horror show, duh, I'm getting what I paid my money for. And as long as I keep paying my money for that kind of a ticket, that's the experience I'm going to have. Well, we didn't understand initially when we made this choice that we made a choice of a horror story. Guilt, sin, and fear, attack, death, dread, time, special relationships, guilt, chaos, fear, emptiness, form, hate. That's the horror story we yeah. paid for. But the ego is the one that got us to accept. Well, the ego, I mean, right, yes, that's you pulled right. the separation off, but there was a price to be paid for. Right. And then yes. it began telling us a story. Yep. Which we bought. Which we bought. Yes. But as we talk about the idea of looking, paying attention, we're being asked to continue to look so that we can become aware of the fact that we chose a horror story. Exactly. And the horror story is never going to take us to love. It doesn't live here. There's special yeah, love. love. There's special love, as we talked about earlier, that we don't even know what love is. The special love is I'm going to make a contract with you, and you're going to love me the way I think you, you should, and you're going to take out the garbage, and you're going to do blah, blah, blah. And that's all fine for the first two weeks in, of the relationship. And then the person decides they don't want to take the garbage out anymore, and now yeah, I hate them. Hard. Well, I'm just using that as an example. And that's not the love the Course is talking about. It's talking about an absolute, unequivocal, um, unconditional love. And, you know, so where do I start? I start with the experience I'm having, which is the horror story. And I keep looking at the horror story and going, why won't this horror story work out the way I think it should? And eventually you go, dang, I can't figure this out on my own. So, you, you know, some of us found the course. And so the course is trying to show us, you pick the horror story. Do you want the horror story to continue? There's another story over here, but you have to become aware that the horror story is not what you want anymore and have the willingness not to try to fix and change or, you know, supplement the horror story, but to drop the horror story and ask the Holy Spirit to fill in the yeah, other there's story. There's something that goes beyond that, the, the horror story, because God comes into the picture. Well, yes, and we blame God for the horror story. Yeah, yes. He is the horror story. Right. right. We accuse the, the God we made up. Yes. He's yes. right. the horror story. Right. But that's not the God that we're talking about, and that's also another part of the layers that need to be brought right. to healing There's as well. another choice. Yes. And it's helpful to remember that I don't do this alone. Absolutely and not. I, as soon as I'm aware of the grievance, you know, whatever situation I've gotten myself into, and Ken calls it saying no to the no. I don't mm -hmm. like suffering. I'm mm -hmm. willing. Yep. I bring that willingness. Well, that's right. And I ask for help. That's right. Because I'm not required to do anything. Nope. It's not up to me. I provide the willingness. Yes. Right. And that is so refreshing when we really get yes, the value yes. of letting go of being in control. I don't even have to figure it out how to fix it. But I do have to start with the recognition that I chose this and I'm getting exactly what I ordered. Yeah, but fear comes in there and it plays well, a very big part. Well, but, but, but understand that even the word fear is a result for having chosen for the ego. So yeah, of course it's going to come in there and, and wrap its little paws around you. It can't not, because it's, it's the foundational bricks of the, the, the choice. 
And so again, the ego, and as I said a few minutes ago, the only thing that the Holy Spirit offers is nothing happened. Well, this offers a whole lot of stories here. Well, and there's mm -hmm. always another layer. And there's always another layer and another story. Yes, and each one will get me. Yes. You yep. can't change that. It doesn't ask you nope. to change that. Yep. And so the question then becomes, do I want to play in the arena of the ego? And I begin to become more and more acutely aware of what that arena is. And then I start to go, wait a minute, I don't want this anymore. And it's not going to be because I'm a nice person and I want to forgive my brother. It's going to because, be because I am so in such deep pain that I can't tolerate being here anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And then the value of choosing becomes, all right, I've had enough. <laughs> what do you got for me, dude? Because my way isn't working. I give up. And our way is not working. And our way will never work. I know there's a workbook lesson that might be 23. I'm not sure where he said, your way will never, ever work. Ever. Never, ever. You have all the time in the world to choose differently, but your way will never work. So you, Marianne. Yes, Jason. If you have a headache, you basically ordered the headache then, right? Yes, but not as Jason. But not as Jason. Right. The result of having chosen for the ego is going to bring some form of I'm an innocent victim of something. And it doesn't matter if it's a headache or I've lost my job or it's somebody saying something mean to me. It doesn't matter what the form is. It's some aspect so that I get the legitimate reason to be an innocent victim of circumstances beyond my control. And that right. will but always I mean, I mean, result of the choice. Pardon me? At the same time, you know, if I have a headache, it might be because of something I ate, or it might be because of something I got poisoned by. No. Or... no, that may be the form of which it gets played out in the play, but that's never really what's going on. Inside. Ever. And we can we can make the you know we can get the list and there's a long list to choose from of ways that we can prove that it wasn't because of that but ultimately it's always 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 because of that because here there are no headaches here there is no suffering no pain no guilt sin and fear no judgment no attack it's only here that that can be played out. So how can you get to the right side of the chart if you have a headache? by doing your best to drop the headache and asking to have that, have him bring you the awareness of who you really are. But see, what we normally want to do is get rid of the headache, which is not really the choice that we're ultimately being asked to choose for. And seeing that the headache is a distraction. Correct. The a good one. are a distraction. Okay. And what Marianne is talking about to me is getting to the root of the problem. Yep. You know, if I want to stay on the surface and keep cutting, chopping off the, the top of the weed. Yep, that's fine. You know, it works. It's I good. Yep. Today, tomorrow, you know, my ass hurts. Yep. Hurts. <laughs> yep. But well, you have to get to the cause of it. The cause is the only place where healing can occur. Which is the mind. Which is in the mind, and it has nothing to do with the body. It has the experience of being in the body because projection within the world and then I identify with one of the characters and it's in a character that's an innocent victim of its headache today and tomorrow will be an innocent victim of something else it's always the game of I'm an innocent victim and I know this is a lot easier to, it's not easy to grasp this because that is not our experience our experience is I woke up this morning, I was fine. Now I have a headache, it must be the headache. And if I have a headache, it's because I ate the wrong thing or somebody hit me on the head or, it, you know, we can go through a stream of answers. But the bottom line is the body, and again, it's body identification. Without a body, could I have a headache? Right, I mean, you, you, have, you really have to use the, the uh, metaphysics of the force. There right. is no body. Right. But it, again, 
that doesn't mean you don't take a Tylenol right. or something. Exactly. Exactly. But just realize what's going on, what's really going on here. It's all magic. Yeah, it's all magic. It has to be because there's no body to have a there's headache. No body. There's no world. And, right. and be very aware we're not usually ready to take that step, so we'll settle happily for a headache because then there is a me, I have a problem and it needs to be solved and we'll just spend all our time working around that. And then the other thing I like to notice sorry, um, is once the headache's gone, I'm still not at peace. Correct. Always a good point to go back to. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> I got a grievance. And yeah. It shouldn't be this way. Yep. Even fixing it, though, says again, I'm in control. Here. Oh, yeah. I got this. Oh, yeah. I'm in control <laughs> when I'm right. Yeah. And, and all the rest yeah. of it, bye bye. Yes. And that's the web of the ego. And it is, I mean, it's, it's mind boggling how. How well it does its job. It's just, it's, it's be. I mean, the longer I study the course, the more I appreciate the way the ego can play its games. It's a, it's a simple uh, definition in the book mm -hmm. is the ego is the, uh, the wish to be what God created, not. Okay, I'm going to repeat that because I don't know if everybody on here. The ego is the wish to be. What God, what God created, created not. Yes. So the ego is the wish to be something yes. other than what God is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the result is, you name it, my life, the many horrible things that can occur within my life in, in the world that I live in. And so God we, is not other. And, God, and not, not only is God not other, God doesn't know anything about, about what's it. going on because that's not part of his vocabulary. This is my vocabulary as a result of having chosen for the ego. I want to tell you a funny story. Because <laughs> back in the mid-80s, when I was really into Scientology, somebody gave me this book uh -huh. and asked me to take a look at it and see what I thought of it. So I went to that clarification of terms. That was the first thing I read. Mm -hmm. What is the ego? Mm -hmm. And of course, I was not ready to read that. Right. Because it seemed to be beating around the bush and not answering a question. And so I just told the person, uh, seems like a bunch of. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, I'm impressed. A person who knows Scientology, um, why did you give it the bad rap? Well, you know, it took me a long time to find that out. <laughs> and. Um, I, well, I read all the books about Hubbard and all that, and I finally realized, and I heard a lot of the upper level people. One reason I stayed in it so long was that I kept thinking, well, if people are giving money for it, lots of money, that it had to be something good. <laughs> but then, as I looked at all the literature that was out there, and people who had gone to OT7 and OT8, they were complaining that they weren't getting what they were supposed to get. And uh, you know, I kept telling them, it's on your next level. Next right, you do, right, 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 yep. And, and uh, people were having all kinds of problems on OT7. I mean, with their bodies and things like that. So I finally decided, I didn't have much money left, but I stayed in any more money. <laughs> all right, so put, it, put it in this mask. <laughs> Yep. Yep. And we're so glad you're back. <laughs> Marianne. Yes. Is the course believe in the Trinity? The Trinity? Is that yes. what you said? It it does address the Trinity, but in a very different way than the the conventional manner does. And I can find where that is. In According the, to the Catholics, the Holy Spirit is part of God. Well, the Course would say the Holy Spirit is part of God, but he would also the Course would also say so are you. 
Okay, we, we we have to get the Holy Spirit to help us return to God, right? Yes, and literally from the perspective of the Course, the Holy Spirit is the part of your mind that remembers who it is. And the ego is the part that covers over the memory of who it is. So when we drop this and ask the Holy Spirit for help, we're literally saying, show me who I really am. Which you're talking to yourself. Well, yeah. well we're ultimately talking to ourselves, yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Sure. All right, so within the light of Bill's acceptance, frantic or mindless thought could settle down, accompanied by a deep sense of relief. And you know, I think that's a beautiful description as we keep practicing the course. We go that from again? that, pardon me? Can you say oh, that I will. Again Within the light of Bill's acceptance, frantic or mindless thought could settle down, accompanied by a deep sense of relief. So it came to a stillness within. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And again, that's why we talk about dropping this to find out this. I can't be in frantic, upset, irritation and be over here. It's not going to work. It's one or the other. I have to let this go and then allow this to come in. And then that experience of, as it says, where is it, a deep sense of relief because I found that place that the answer can come into. And the Course talks a great deal about living in the now or living in the presence. If you're bringing in anything from the past or anything from the future, you can't be in that presence at that empty space. And the empty space is the only place where the answer can come. And the question is, do I want that empty space more than I want the craziness of my life? and be very aware of how quickly you want to fill that hole with, but I have to be right, I'm going to show, blah, 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 blah. And, and don't, don't be hard on yourself again, because that's how we're addicted to being. Well, you, you become aware of how many distractions you run to. Absolutely. You, you know, we're, we're so busy day in and day out, keeping the mind so busy, yep. that we have no time to look at anything other than that. Yep. Well, and, and again, that's the purpose of the yeah, ego world is is to keep you stuck in the world. Keep me rooted here. Keep yeah. me rooted. It's you know, as I said earlier, it's it's amazing how well it's structured. And on some level, that's what we want because we're too afraid of the well, love you of know, God. Kim, said, said, you know, we're willing, including death, to. Absolutely. Fulfill our secret wish of being hurt, uh, abandoned, whatever. Absolutely. Whatever to make this thing seem more real. Yep. And is how? What we do. Yep. Give this more reality. Yep. I told you I was right. God was wrong. Yep. <laughs> and as we become aware that that does not bring me peace, we're more willing to let it go to find out what the answer of that major release from all that looks like. But again, it's, it's really not much different than a little kid who, let's say, five years old, and they want to go play, and Dad says, now calm down, and I want you to read this little story. I don't care if it's nice outside. Come and sit and read this story. Well, that little kid is not going to sit down and read the story. They're going to run and play and do whatever they do because He's that's where they are. In, in Absolutely. That he wants to do. Right. And eventually, maybe one day, he would happily sit and read the book. But to try to cram that down somebody's throat isn't going to happen. That doesn't work anyway. Doesn't, it, it absolutely doesn't work. All right, imagine no need to defend, impress, convince, or dominate. Mm -hmm. And I'll read that again. Imagine no need to defend, impress, convince, or dominate. So build up your self-esteem for what? Through the Holy Spirit, not for the things of the world. Right. Exactly. And we gravitate being right, 
what do I look like? Yep. How do I have right. I impressed you? Yep. And again, as we're being asked in the initial stages of probably the first hundred years of practicing the course mm -hmm. is to observe. Look at how quickly I need to defend myself because I think I'm right and you're wrong. Or I need to show you how cool I am because I know I'm not. And I have to make that facade to prove to you that I'm okay or that I need to convince somebody. I mean, this is what we're doing all day long, baby well, that's people. Well, Jesus came the first time around to show people you don't, defenselessness is what you need. Yes. That's how you live. Right, and that made no sense at all and, to most and, people. And what did people do? They became afraid. Of course, right. And if we're choosing for the ego, one of the foundational bricks is fear, guilt, sin, and fear. So I'm always gonna stream through that thought system until I disrupt the thought system and choose the other one. Well, there's a section in the course where he says, in, uh, sin um, invested, I forget how he said it, sin and guilt invested not with guilt, and above all, don't become afraid. Right. That's us. Yep, yeah, I know the part. Yeah. Yep. So people relaxed in his presence. And again, the, the Course talks about the idea of as I heal, I will heal others. And it's not like I go knocking on doors or giving people Course himself. books. As you live the peace, other people will experience your peace in the presence of you. They may not even understand what's going on, but they will feel your presence because your presence is an effect of having chosen the thought system of peace. People, all right, Bill, Bill's acceptance had the instantaneous profound effect of orienting people to their own innate value and the expansion was automatic. And this kind of reminds me of Jesus as they spoke of him. People would come to Jesus, fix me, take care of me. And while they were in his presence, healings oftentimes happened or that peace became more prominent. But Change most people, mind. when they left the scenario, the, you know, after a day or two, they lose that because it's not theirs. They just got a little shine in over here and picked up yeah, a little they good vibe. Jesus didn't yes. do anything. Correct. And it's, they, their mind. they have to do it, yes. And there's nothing wrong with being in the presence of somebody that can demonstrate that, but unless we take it home and do it for ourselves, it's just, you know, a pointing of the way where we well, can go. Well, somehow it supports the fact, well, if they can do it, I guess I can do it. Well, hopefully that would be correct, yes. <laughs> you know, and that's what a lot of people in AA, say, you know, I sure. go to the meetings just to see how others right. have done exactly. it. Right, exactly, yep. And we do need demonstration, yep. But, you know, Ken used to say as well, you know, you call on the Holy Spirit to give, you know, you're like a little child in bed and, you know, he, he tucks you in and he brings you some warm welcome and you, see, you can sleep better. But this is not about staying there. This is about you standing up and growing up and becoming like him so then you can demonstrate exactly what he demonstrates. If you're always looking to be fed and fed and fed and fed, you are not becoming what he's offering the possibility for. All right, so the Course speaks of the healing effect that practicing forgiveness has on others. And again, it's not you pounding somebody over the head with a book, it's you demonstrating what this is. The power of witness is beyond belief because it brings conviction in its wake. Now in the hands made gentle by his touch, and this is a part in the Course, now in the hands made gentle by his touch, the Holy Spirit lays a picture of a different you, which is kind of what you were talking about, Jenny, as we start to 
become more and more in tune, we actually express in a different way. We're not who we were when we are identified with the ego. The body looks the same, we act, you know, mind act the same, but what's running the puppet has changed. It is a picture of a body still, for what you really are cannot be seen nor pictured. So in other words, the body looks the same, but what's operating the body will shift. Show this unto your brother, who will see that every scar is healed and every tear is wiped away in laughter and in love. He will look on his forgiveness there and with healed eyes will look beyond to the innocence that he beholds in you. Here is the proof that he has never sinned, that nothing which his madness bid him do was ever done or ever had effects of any kind. Now, those are beautiful words, but the deal with that is we have to come to the realization that this literally was a dream and it has no effect on who you are. And when you get to the point where you identify with who you are, this all falls away and you understand that all the value that we held towards the dream was nothing. And Jesus speaks of that throughout the course. He'll say over and over, it appears there's two choices, but there's really only one because only one is true. And as we begin to identify and live from that point of view of the one and only real right answer, we then become the reflection of the right answer instead of the projection of the answer of the ego. And they're automatic. When I keep choosing for the Holy Spirit, the reflection becomes the love, much like a, a lighthouse. The lighthouse doesn't walk up to people and say, here, you better read this book, you're gonna love it. The lighthouse shines light because that's its essence. And we literally will grow into the essence of the choice for the love versus the choice for the opposite of love, which is the choice for the ego, which automatically shines down on the world, just like this will automatically shine down on the world. All right, and understand, and I'm gonna say this mostly for Bob because many of the people understand that the course's description of forgiveness isn't, you did something wrong, now I'm gonna forgive you. The course's ultimate understanding of forgiveness is that you recognize that none of this is real, which takes a lot of practice before we can come to that realization. All right, and he will look on his forgiveness there and will and with healed eyes will look beyond it to the innocence that he beholds in you. So you will automatically begin to see the innocence in your brother because you have taken off the glasses or the sunglasses that are keeping you from seeing your brother as he is. And understand, we wanted to see our brother through the lens of the glasses because that's the only way I could continue to play the part of an innocent victim and make something or someone else the guilty party. So if any of you think you're like this really nice person, understand that when we align with the ego, we literally make our brother the bad guy so we can appear to be the good guy. And that's not nice. <laughs> Let me tell you this about that. Okay, here is the proof that he has never well, you sinned. Know, that thought takes the heat off yourself mm. and what you think of yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. That. Absolutely, yes. And, you know, you can think about choosing for the ego is never going to bring you anything good, and choosing for the Holy Spirit is always going to bring you something good. So, you know, if nothing else, recognize that that is, a, a, you know, some value, or maybe you don't, I, you know, I don't know. The course says invest in that with fear. Correct. But we've invested this whole thing with yeah. fear. Well, but this is the choice for the separation, yeah, and right. guilt, sin, and fear is the main building blocks of this thought system. It comes naturally with it. It can't not come with it. And I can be the sweet little old lady giving cookies to my neighborhood kids, but if I'm coming from the ego, I'm not coming from love. 
because I'm really doing it with some motivation of well, aren't I nice? Correct. To the rest of the people. Correct. And I don't even necessarily realize that I'm doing that. But the bottom line is, yeah. if I'm coming from the ego mind, it is not coming from there the love. It's there. It, it's, it's there. Yep. All right. All right. Here is the proof that he has never sinned, and that's your brother. He's never sinned. How many of you have a life that nobody in your family or anybody you know has never sinned, including yourself? It's not where we're coming from yet. That, that, that's just not. We're spending a lifetime justifying. And spending a lifetime justifying it. Yes. Really? Yep. But that all keeps us very busy within the context exactly. of the illusion. Yeah. So here is the proof that he has never sinned, that nothing which his madness bid him do was ever done or ever had effects of any kind. And you know, I always love to bring so much of the teachings back to Jesus dying on the cross. When he was dying on the cross, I don't know about the rest of you, but today I don't think I'd be a very happy camper and I would probably be pointing my finger at the people that were doing this to me. He did not because he was completely aligned with who he really was and what they were doing to his body had absolutely no effect on who he knew he was. So he could look at all those people that seemingly were doing bad things was that they were calling for love. And the only answer to calling for love, if you're aligned with love, is to automatically love. Well, I think we all, if we put ourselves in a similar situation, would have to evaluate how would I respond. And if, it, again, if you squeeze me and something other than love comes out, you know you're not done yet. And that's not to make you feel bad. It's to make you understand if I'm not coming from love 24 hours a day, I'm aligned with my ego. And now I have an opportunity to do something different about it when I'm ready to do so. All right, that no reproach he had laid upon his heart was ever justified. Ugh. And just think of all the ways, and again, this was all an effect of having chosen for the ego, but none of it was ever justified, none of it. And look at how 24 hours a day we are justifying everything that we do and say and act and however, none well, of it the more outrageous it is, supports that thought. Yep. It's Absolutely. It's simple to yep. justify when it's really outrageous. Well, and it's simple to justify when I'm coming from a world that's about justifying it. It's the automatic, it's the programming of the ego. It, it's doing what it was programmed to do. And, you know, I, I kind of like that little section where it, it talked about Bill thinking of this as a cult. You know, when you're enmeshed in a cult, you follow the leader, and the leader says, this is the way it is, you do it. Well, literally, all of us have followed the suit of the leader, and the leader was the belief in guilt, sin, and fear, kill or be killed. So we're just doing what this programming has led us to do until you finally realize something wrong here. The, the answer that I'm questing for is not available under my control of the situation. Yep. I was wondering if you could go over that double shield of oblivion thing one more time. Well, because basically we, we, we chose it and now we're in it and so we continue to feed into it and we keep cycling in the, the storyline that's a lie. Well, we never go this. to the realization, I'm in a lie. We go we, to this. We decided that we didn't want what God had to offer. Yes. And then we forgot we made the decision. Correct. And then we that's just... That's the shield of living. Yes, that's correct. Yep. Yeah. yep. And... and about the, the left right. side of the chart. Right, and, and then we forgot about that. Yep. That's the second That's the second. Yep, yep. So we just, Works you know, conveniently. <laughs> yes, it does. But, but think about, and I'm just going to throw this out there. Think about, let's say you, you say a little white lie. What do you do? Then you have to defend your lie, and then you have to defend your lie that you lied about. And it's like that's basically what, in a bigger framework, 
that has taken place here. And all we have to do, and we don't want to because we don't trust it and we don't believe it will do it, is recognize, oh, I chose a lie, okay, I don't want the lie anymore, stop. And how much pain does the lie bring to you? Oh my gosh. I, oh. You know, the mm. other thing mm. that, that, that's been, I've been experiencing lately is, is seeing how the, my defenses are causing me pain. How much pain the defenses, anxiety and all of sure. these. Sure. You know, and it's just like, I don't, I don't want to do this. Yep, I want off the ride. Yep, yep. All right, so that no reproach he laid upon his heart was ever justified, and no attack can ever touch him with the poison and relentless sting of fear. And again, until I'm ready to relinquish that belief system, choose for the other thought system and as I begin to choose for that other thought system all that other side just falls away I don't have to figure out how to get rid of it I mean what more can we ask for for how easy it could be but on some level we cling to the belief that I'm right and I got it going and blah 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 and one of the things that Bill focused on a great deal was not to take the illusion so seriously and that's one of the challenges not to take the illusion so seriously yeah all right so i'm going to read just a couple little quotes and this one is uh, was in the book in workbook lesson 135 paragraph 20 if anybody wants to look it up later without defenses you become a light which heaven gratefully acknowledges to be its own. And it will lead you on in ways appointed for your happiness according to the ancient plan begun when time was born. Your followers will join their light and yours, and it will be increased until the world is lighted up with joy. And nothing or I'm sorry, and gladly will your brothers lie lay aside their um, cumbersome defeats which availed them nothing and could only terrify. And that's where this is going to lead us to, guys. But no. No. And that's why <laughs> I, I'm very well, honestly, yeah. And again, when you recognize that you still accept yourself as evil, sin, and darkness, that you stop and you go, oh my gosh, that's the result that's of the, having chosen that ego. Thought. I'm yes. Telling myself in the mind. And eventually, as you align with this, the thoughts in your mind are going to shift to a totally different conversation because the catalyst that brings those thoughts will no longer be engaged. I remember Patty Keverly saying this was years ago. I know. The Holy Spirit. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is in a workbook lesson, lesson 249. Forgiveness ends all suffering and loss, all of it, and not the forgiveness of you done me wrong and I'm, I'm going to be one up you and I'm going to you know, forgive you. It's the recognition that none of this is real. So forgiveness paints a picture of a world where suffering is over. Loss becomes impossible and anger makes no sense. Attack is gone and madness has its end. When suffering is now, con when, I'm sorry, what suffering is now conceivable? What loss can be sustained? The world becomes a place of joy, abundance, charity, and endless giving. It is now so like to heaven that it quickly is transformed into the light that it reflects. And so the journey which the Son of God began has ended in the light from which it came. And I'm just going to go through a little bit of that. So forgiveness paints a picture of a world where suffering is over, loss becomes impossible, and anger makes no sense. And all those words or attributes are all about the ego. Again, the, the, the dictionary of this and this are totally different. 
None of those words live over here at all, ever, or never will. Attack is gone, and I just want to you know, when it said, and anger makes no sense. My husband and I used to teach metaphysics classes for years and years, and um, this one girl said, but I, I don't want to let my go of my anger. I like my anger. It's fun. And, you know, she was serious. She That just didn't make any sense. But as I think we get to the point where we realize what the choosing for that, you know, what I'm losing because of that, we slowly are willing to release it because it has no value to me any longer. Attack is gone and madness has, en has an end. Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, what suffering is now conceivable? And there could be no, no suffering once we finally let go of the value of what the ego world is about. What moss can be sustained? It can't be. The world becomes a place of joy, abundance, charity, and endless giving. And I know a lot of times people will say, but you know, I'll, I'll never get this. And yes, it's true, it's gonna take us some practice, it's gonna take us a lot of work before we get to that point. But at least as we're taking the stepping stones to walk in that direction, it's going to take us to that. Maybe it won't be today or tomorrow or this lifetime even. There is an end where all the suffering and pain and attack and so on will eventually end. Not only that, but Jesus said we will all get there. But then the question is, am I willing to work on walking in that direction at this time? It is now so like to heaven that it quickly tra is transformed into the light that it reflects. And so the journey which the Son of God began has ended in the light from which it came. So it's like we, we started out by choosing against the light and then we make the, the journey back to where the light was. And the whole time God is just sitting there loving us and we go through all these contortions because of the acceptance of the belief system of the ego and what the effects of that have brought to us. Father, we would return our minds to you. We have betrayed them, held them in a vice of bitterness, and frightened them with thoughts of violence and death. Now would we rest again in you as you created us. And again, what do I want? And initially, we can think we want it, and then we find out that we don't always want it. And then we have to begin to smile at the fact that right now I'm just not ready for that. But as I keep asking, as I keep getting out on the court, I will slowly begin to develop the tools that will take me to that final answer. Alrighty then, I think it's that time. So, where they went for this? Okay. All right. Everybody take a nice big deep breath and let it all go. Forgive us our illusions, Father, and help us to accept our true relationship with you in which there are no illusions and where none can ever enter. Our holiness is yours. What can there be in us that needs forgiveness, which is versus perfect? The sleep of forgetfulness is only the unwillingness to remember your forgiveness and your love. Let us not wander into temptation, for the temptation of the Son of God is not your will. And let us receive only what you have given, and accept but this into the minds that you've created and which you love. Amen. All right, I hope everybody has a wonderful 4th of July and go forth and practice <laughs> or not.